welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to this, the Tuesday edition for this week of broadcasting. Today, because it's Tuesday, I tend to turn away from our study in the whatever book of the Bible we tend to be walking through, and my Bible today is open to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, best known to us in Christendom as the love chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I want to read you some verses that, frankly, I'm sure you are very, very familiar with. I'm going to begin reading at verse 4 in just a moment. So, if you can, reach over, get your Bible, and join us there. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is the Tuesday edition, and we try to encourage each other in a more pointed way on the Tuesday broadcast and our desire to see the gospel of Jesus Christ go farther through our personal witnessing efforts. So we call our Tuesday uh, broadcast our Track and Truth Tuesday. Track because we want to encourage each other to use gospel tracks and truth because we want to sharpen each other in the truth of the gospel and how we can communicate it. Well, let me start this way. Are you an animal lover? I am one of six children. I'm next to the youngest. I have one sister younger than me, four years younger. She is an animal lover. She really would do what the lady is going to do in the story I'm going to tell you. This is a true story. Some years ago now, a man living in in Wyoming, he retired, and he and his wife then moved to Arkansas. They hired a professional moving company and moved their stuff, and they left uh, with the instructions for the movers to also bring their cat with them in the truck when their stuff came. And uh, so the day for the move came. The movers uh, got their stuff in the truck, went to try to get the cat, but they couldn't catch the cat. Well... They uh, got all the belongings in the the truck. The movers moved the stuff to Arkansas and just had to confess they could not get the cat. Well, the lady, after all her stuff got packed into the new or unpacked into the new house, she got in her car and drove 1,500 miles back to the old house in Wyoming. In five minutes, she had rounded up her cat using about 25 or 50 cents worth of liver she bought there at the store. Now, tell me, would you drive 1,500 miles to find a cat or a dog? You see, real animal lovers do stuff like this. They do it, well, they do it just about anything to provide for their their pets, won't they? You and I, friend, are supposed to love lost souls. Do we love lost souls? The, the, The same way that this lady loved her cat, do we show our love the way this lady showed her love? Today, I would be really interested in you responding to the broadcast. I'm going to be giving you a text messaging number right now. And uh, at the end of the broadcast, text me the word gospel. That's G-O-S-P-E-L. Text me the word gospel to this number. And let's you and I make this a two-way communication. You text me and I will begin to ask you some simple questions that require a minimal amount of, of you uh, using your phone to respond back. But your response really would help us. Text the word gospel to this number. It's area code 708 708- Five one five forty eighty six. That's seven zero eight. 515-4086. Now, after I get done, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give you some means by which you can communicate with us and get a free sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. He'll give our mailing address, a phone number, an email, a website. He'll give all of that because I, w- I want you to have, 
I want you to have a free sample packet of all of our English tracks. And one of the tracks in that sample packet is the one in my hand right now entitled, Have You Received God's Gift? Have you received God's gift? A simple question, isn't it? I don't read tracks. I'm going to read parts here in the smatterings out of this track. It begins with this statement. A gift must be received in order to be enjoyed. Then the track immediately goes into the gospel. It says, you need God's gift because you need a Savior. And we have some verses there describing that people are sinners. And then it says here, someday you will face a holy God in your sin unless you find some way to remove them. Now, Again, some verses are there. The the track also says, if you try to earn or merit forgiveness and favor with God, which you can't, you will never be sure if you're saved. I'm jumping down farther in the track. It says this, God's gift, born of the Virgin Mary, lived a perfect life and then gave his blood on the, uh, blood on the cross as wicked men nailed him to die. But he arose from the grave that he might be your Lord and Savior. He lives as the man, Christ Jesus, a quote there from 1 Timothy, in the same body of flesh and bones in which he was crucified and buried. I've jumped down the track again. It says it is possible to spurn a gift or reject it. Here's a great, simple, clear gospel track. I want you to have it. Would you let me send it to you, please? My announcer will give you, as I said, mailing address, phone number, and so on. You ask for the sample packet, please, of our tracks. Let me read you verses here out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says this, beginning at verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things." Charity never faileth. I'll stop reading right there. When many folk uh, hear the verses that I've just read, what they think they're hearing is a definition of love, but they're not. Now, other folk will hear those verses and think that they're hearing a description of love. These folk are getting close, but they're really not quite there yet. In a minute, I'm going to tell you What we are actually given here by God in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. Let me stop first and do this. Uh, Today, in today's mail, as I'm making this broadcast, I received uh, this note, and let me read it to you. It says, last summer, an elderly man stopped me at an intersection in our small city asking for a ride home that was eight blocks away. The lady goes on to say, I hesitated, not knowing him, but gave him a ride anyway. Three days later, I read in our local newspaper his obituary. Needless to say, I was sad I had not given him a track, although his eyesight appeared to be very poor. So, instead, I mailed his only son a a sympathy card and a track from your ministry. He, the son, phoned me later, thanking me for it and said that the jester reminded him of Jesus. I haven't heard from this man since since he phoned me. He lives in another town in my state. I am praying for his salvation. Now, friend, listen to me. I know the lady who sent me this note. She is a godly, mature lady. She is faithful to the Lord and to her family, to her church. This family supports the ministry. You know how I know she's a mature believer? I can tell by the fact that rather than sit and feel guilty over a missed witnessing opportunity, this lady used this missed opportunity to prompt to a godly reaction, a godly response, a godly action. Mature saints are not perfect saints. They just learn from the times they live lives less than their best for Christ. Now, Let me go back to our statements here out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is correctly called the love chapter, and I will not uh, uh, put this chapter in the context of spiritual gifts. Someday we'll have to teach our way through the book of 1 Corinthians as we are wont to do in our broadcast here. But these verses, verses 4 through 7, these are not a definition of love. 
The definition, definition of love is God. God is love. Nor do these verses give to us a description, really. Oh, they're descriptive, but they're really not a description. You see, to be a description, they'd have to be adjectives. But these words here are all verbs. These are not a definition. These are not a description. These are the deeds of love. You see, love is always presented to us in the Word of God as an action. Try this verse. For God so what? For God so loved the world that he gave. God's love is an acting love. These are the actions of love. You and I can measure our love by the fact of are you and I doing the things listed here and not doing the things that we're not supposed to do that are listed here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. Now listen, that lady with that cat she, she loved that cat. How do I know it? She did something. She went way out of her way, 1,500 miles out of her way, uh, spent the money on gasoline. Now, gas didn't cost as much as it does right now, but she sure spent a lot of gas money on that cat because she loved the cat. I know she loved the cat because her actions display it. Do you and I display a love for lost people? Are you and I putting up with some of the, well, my mother used to use the word shenanigans. Uh, are you and I putting up with some of the things that lost people do that because they're sinners, they do things that are sinful. They they pull sin pranks, and that's probably not the best way to put it, but they, they do things that just can irritate a saint, can irritate a lover of God because they're just in foolishness, doing things that are just piling on the sin in their lives. Do we love people in spite of their sin so that we can give them the gospel? Do we find ways to to see around their, their sin habits so we can give them the gospel? Do we see lost people as savable and love them in the love of Christ and give them the gospel? Oh, let's at least love lost people the way cat lovers love their cats and dog lovers love their dogs. Okay? Now listen, how does this statement about the love of God and these illustrations, how does this impact you as a person who wants to share the gospel? Are there people that you need to be sharing the gospel to that you are, well, you're not taking your opportunities? Respond to me, won't you please? Text me the word gospel to the number here. Here's the text messaging number. Now, the number I'm going to give here again, this is just for text messaging. You can't order tracks through this number, but text me the word gospel to area code 708 515 4086. That's 708 515 4086. Now, it's not enough, dear believer friend. For you and I to talk about the love of God, we have to do the love of God. So who is it that God has put into your mind, in your thoughts right now, that he wants you to communicate the gospel to? What lost person? Is it a loved one? Is it a workmate? Is it a next door neighbor? Is it a schoolmate? Is it somebody? Who is it that God wants you to do something, put your love into action, and give them the gospel? Don't hesitate. Do it today. Because we love lost people like Jesus does. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. That's 309 309- 828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.